original Corrie star, Tina O'Brien, spoken for the first time about her breakup seven months ago from co-star Ryan Thomas. She's told a magazine, I was absolutely devastated. He said he didn't love me and didn't want to be with me. He reportedly said to her, you don't do it for me anymore. So it begs the question, girls, can a relationship survive if one partner physically rejects the other? Well, I, I can speak on this um, quite openly now because I wrote about it, but my first husband, I actually had a non-consummated marriage. Um, I won't go into the detail of why I married somebody that didn't fancy me, but, but basically he, he, and actually it's quite common apparently, he could, he could make love to people if it was a one-night stand or it kind of, you know, it was sort of grubby sex, but he couldn't make love to the woman he loved. Um, and it was devastating and it had a devastating effect on me. And I can only say to lie next to somebody night after night who doesn't want to touch you is awful. How long did you part with that? A year. Blimey. And I absolutely, and the thing is that I knew there was a problem, but I, like all women, you know, we live in hope that we can change our men and that if I gave him enough love, it would happen. So I, I feel very strongly, I see no reason in the world, uh, if a relationship breaks down, it can break down for lots of reasons. If, if the sex isn't right, it, it is terribly noticeable, but there's no reason ever to turn around to somebody and say, I don't fancy you because because you're ugly or because, you, you know, you don't turn me on. Or you, and a relationship can break down but, and you just say that's the end. You don't have to be personal Did that affect your it. future choices then? Um, it did, yes. I mean, then I made it. Obviously, a... you're gonna, not going to be thinking, I must go out with someone and marry someone who doesn't want to have sex with me again. Yes, and I've always said, actually, and I've said on this programme many times, I think passion and the sexual relationship is incredibly important. Hugely, in a way. Yeah. Not that it holds it together, but if it's not there and it's wrong, you notice it. You become very aware of it. It's when it's right and it's fine, you don't yeah, think then, about yeah, it. The question is, can you get past that, though? Can you, can you, you know, can you be in a relationship where, you know, someone might reject you for a while or you might reject them for a while and well, then yeah, I think that's different you know, get to back somebody. to it. That's because... a normal ebb and flow of a relationship. Yeah, but, yeah. I, but I don't know. I think some people some people can't. I mean, personally I don't I don't know what it's like at the moment in this in this relationship to to, to be rejected because but it's still I never very have new. to ask. No, well, but it's still very new. It's only two years old. Yes, your it's two years, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Mm. I can't imagine I can't imagine what it would be like to sleep in the same bed as someone night after night and not not have that physical contact because that is it it is a huge part of yeah. it and if it did happen i mean regularly and you if i kind of thought something was wrong i don't know i, I don't I definitely i don't think i could live with it um I, I i have lived with it i mean like you say it's the ebb and flow of a normal relationship i think there are times when you're just physically so connected and other times when you're not so physically connected and i don't think that those times are necessarily you know sort of significant in that the relationship is over i think you know that can be a number of things you can be you could have just had a new baby hormones um, just or you know a medical condition like you know a thyroid thing or something you don't know what's wrong with you but i and i i can understand how a, that part of a relationship is very, very important and, and can be essential, but, but it's not just about finding someone physically attractive. A relationship can go a lot deeper course, than that. Mm. And, I, and I just, I mean, I think to say to somebody that you just, uh, that, that I don't find you physically attractive or to say to somebody those words is just so incredibly unnecessarily hurtful but to end it with over. somebody because but, but a relationship i don't think should be over just because the physical side has <laughs> waned i mean i can understand i can't actually imagine how painful that must be because for a man not to want to have sex with you yes. because i've only in my experience every man i've met wants it all the time i don't think that's it. me blowing myself you know no, but that makes it doubly hurtful because there's part of you that must think, well, men want it all the time, so if he doesn't want it with me, I must be the worst person on the, on the planet. It's a, it's a huge rejection, especially if you've just had a small child, because, um, you know, your, your hormones have changed. And I think this is more common than people realise mm. among, amongst couples who've just had children, because, you know, the men go, for, especially if it's your first child, men go from being centre of attention to suddenly the woman doesn't have as much time for them anymore, and mm. a lot of men can't necessarily cope with that. But oh, if you're definitely. talking about the end of a relationship, relationship you know sometimes in a relationship one of you knows it's over for a long time a much much longer maybe than than the other person is willing to accept that it's over, mm. uh, yes, over but Carol, you so in those cases no Linda hang on a sec in those cases sometimes it is important to say maybe something that is so so honest and so hurtful that that person 
can move on That's and what... can accept that the relationship is absolutely over. And I'm no. not saying necessarily in a marriage. No. I'm not talking no, no. about when you've just but had a baby physical, or anything like right that. You... I'm talking about ending a relationship. Yeah, Sometimes Carol. you need to say the words that someone yeah, doesn't want don't to hear. Think, I don't love you anymore is enough. Yes. I you don't, don't have to, I don't, I don't love you anymore is enough. You don't have to go, you're ugly, I don't fancy you. Relationship before where you can say that and people just think oh you know they don't know what they're saying well, then and then you carry on with it you carry on. Well, I've done it I've done it I've well, stayed in a relationship Carol, for a much longer than I should have end done a knowing someone didn't love me you cannot end a relationship on something just because you're angry and it's the first thing that comes it's into your not, head that's spiteful that. and nasty I'm not you have that. to be truthful when you end a relationship that. and if you're going to leave somebody heartbroken but, don't make them feel like they've got absolutely no self-worth and self-esteem well, that's all i'm well saying is sometimes there. you have to be totally truthful mm. and say what someone doesn't want to hear in order for them to be able to would move on and know that it's definitely over physically undesirable would you just carol but carol i don't find carol, anybody physically uh, undesirable. <laughs> Carol, I don't fancy you anymore. <laughs> it's over, fellas, it's over. Move on. Actually, funny you should say that, it is almost over.